What's going on, non fungible fam? It's the non fungible five again. I'm here with my co host Mustafa, and we're here today to actually do things a little different. Um, we're going to be actually talking about a video that's not so much time sensitive, but it's very informational and it's going to be very beneficial to how you guys navigate in the space. Today's video's topic is how to get whitelist and what are the best ways to get whitelist. First off, give us a follow on Twitter, guys. We're trying to grow that following base and we're trying to get bigger. Um, we're going to be posting all of our videos as well as anything insightful that we have to say about the market in general. In addition to that, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well and get your friends to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're going to be hosting a giveaway once we hit 100 subscribers. So let's try to get there as fast as possible, guys, so we can get that giveaway underway. And lastly, before we start the video, is we're going to be doing our upload schedule every Monday and Thursday. So you guys can expect videos on those days for anything that's just going on in general. So the first main thing we're gonna be talking about is the importance of whitelist and the process of actually getting onto the whitelist. In terms of the importance of whitelist, what you first have to think of is that when Mike you're buying off. things Mike off of secondary off. sales, so meaning open C most times, it's very difficult to be profitable unless you really, really know what you're doing. And then even then, there's there's a good chance that your sale could go wrong. So the best consistent way to be profitable in the NFT market is to get whitelist. And why I think that Mike is on. because Mike, of the 24-hour period they usually give you. Mike so off. when you get whitelist, they usually give off. you a 24-hour period where you can buy the NFT. So if you're smart, which more people are kind of leaning towards nowadays, you'll actually check the volume and the actual floor price of the collection. So you can see how the actual collection is doing before you decide if you want to actually jump in and buy it. So that's really important because that basically just mitigates risk. You have basically no risk because you have that flexibility of when you want to buy it within that 24 hours and you can see how it's going to do and you can see if there's a demand for the project at all. So if a project Mike doesn't on. do well, you Mike don't mint. If a project on. does well, you mint within that 24 hours and you can Mike flip off. if you want to and Mike make your money. Off. So that's why I think it's really important. Another thing that's really important to actually where we are right now in the market is because things are a little bearish right now and there's not as much volume in the market in general, things on the secondary sell side is not doing or performing as well as they were in, let's say, January. So whitelist. I guess you could say during the bear market is even more valuable because it's one of the only exclusive ways, I guess you could say, to make money. Don't get me wrong. You can still make money in the secondary market. It's just a lot more difficult and you have to be a lot more selective. So just kind of grinding whitelist is a very risk adverse way that you can make money even when the market is in a serious downtrend. And we, we've done this from actual personal experiences. We've been We've been doing this since like September when things were were very down because August was a very good month and then things crashed. So we started and worked our way through the bear market. So we know the value of whitelist. So another thing I'd like to mention is different projects obviously have different methods of getting whitelists. And it's also very important to take note on how they're, they're collecting their list for the whitelist because it's important for how the community will develop and the outcome of the project community is the foundation of the project and if you see like a project doing invites or leveling up in the discord to get whitelist um, you can you can clearly tell that the community will not be strongly knit and it will be a community of constant flippers and the discord may be botted and the numbers may not be the true value of actual people within that discord also giveaways on twitter is also in my opinion a really bad way to give whitelist to a community obviously i know some projects do some giveaways but i prefer to either keep it to no giveaways or a very limited amount of giveaways because when you're giving something to someone so easily i guess who may not even be necessarily really interested or invested in the actual what the project's trying to do they could just be there to flip or they may not even mint at all. So you really want to hone in and and find really unique and and well thought out and 
methods of giving out whitelists so you can vet and actually understand oh the gosh, people that you're giving whitelists to rather off. than just giving out at random or to strangers or really easily through methods like leveling or invites for example mm -hmm. you can build a really strong community when you do things like you know more community-based whitelist things that provide more like whitelist through collaboration through more effort you know like the more effort involved to get the whitelist the better in my opinion i'd also like to say when you see a project that's hand selecting their whitelist like you have the actual mods and the founders watching how people interact with each other and watching what they do on their discord channel um it gives you more hope for a better a better well-knit community and once they drop their project, you can have some sort of faith that not everyone here is to quickly dump this project because they just want to make quick profits and get out. But I'd also like to say, like, you also see a lot of projects nowadays, like, doing that in terms of, like, a hand-picked whitelist. So even that, you can My build off. a kind My of synthetic community because if you have a moderation team that isn't necessarily the best judge of character and they're just giving out whitelists left, right, and center you're not going to have a very well-knit community. So in my opinion, the best way to do it is you want to find projects that are giving out whitelists through handpicked or some sort of something that involves a lot of effort, but it's, it's, it's very well thought out. Whoever's hiring the moderators has to be very mindful about recruitment and who they're hiring. And they have to be very critical and a good judge of character so that they can meet these people and understand really who's good for the project and who's not so that you can whitelist people you think are actually good for the project and not people who are just faking it or grinding or just there to make a quick buck because i mean let's be real like most people actually um like yeah most people were in it in the space to make a lot of money we want to see a genuine interest in the project and you want to have a mod team that can be able to differentiate people who are actually generally interested and people who are strictly here for just the money. So one of the first ways to get whitelists that we're going to talk about here is through art, any type of sort of artwork. This could be digital artwork, such as making something on Photoshop if you have that digital skill. This could be hand-drawn artwork if you're more of a paper pencil artist. It could also be things that you don't expect, such as like music, uh, I've seen some people actually make like their own custom songs or, or anthems for their projects and projects actually love when people do that. Um, I also see sometimes um, people make these dances for their projects. Um, I don't know if that works too much. I know some projects like that, but I don't see it often in the space. In addition to just art, just skills in general. So if like you can showcase like a talent or some sort of skill, and like really show people and kind of like relate it to the project and show that like oh you spent a lot of time and effort and plus you showed off your talents to show how much you love the project that can be a really good way to get whitelist if if not if you don't have artistic skills for example and you have other skills yeah i'd like to also say that this method has actually worked for us um i make some art I make some digital art on my uh, iPad uh, through drawing with my Apple Pencil, not like Photoshop or anything like that, and I can put up some of the artwork here. Um, I've made artwork um, for everyone in the Non-Fungible 5 for Ape Kids Club, which got us all whitelist, and uh, I've actually made artwork for My Pet Hooligan, um, which didn't get me whitelist. They weren't getting out whitelist through artworks, um, but it made me way more well-known within that community, and um, every time I would hop into that Discord or talk to anyone in this in that in the Discord, Discord, they would be like oh it's the artist the artist is here and it sort of built that name for myself within that community to build on what you just said mustafa it's kind of relates gosh, to our next point which is off. community engagement so that's kind of my specialty i guess you could say i'm really big on building connections with people and just building long-lasting relationships and understanding that you know this space we're all like-minded we're all here we're all early we all are very interested, so why not sit here and discuss and connect and really, you know, everyone's from a different place in the world. It's a really, it's a really interesting space that I've never seen before. So I kind of spent a lot of time, not only, I'm not very big on the actual text chat, but I spent a lot of time in the voice chats and I just 
I don't grind for levels or anything like that. My goal when I go into a community is just to learn about the project and to share what I've learned and what I like and to make as much meaningful connections as possible so that even if I don't get the whitelist through doing all those things, that I'll still walk out of it with tons of connections and tons of friends that honestly down the line have helped me out a lot like people i met in october for example ended up being some of the moderators for some of the biggest projects in january and december and that benefited me a lot for example so just remember that networking connections and actual building relationships is really important in the space and especially when it's really small right now a lot of these people you're going to meet are going to do some honestly some really big things in the space so you want to have your ear to the ground and really meet as many people as possible so you can if you want to do something in the space you can do it and that you have as many opportunities and you know doors open for you as well so some community events i've actually seen in discord um involve like wellness there'll be like mental health sessions um they even do like live yoga sessions they'll have meditation sessions where everyone just joins in and there's someone there's like a um, a speaker who will guide everyone through a guided meditation. Um, they have like DJ party events within their Discord. Sometimes they even have uh, movie events uh, where everyone joins and watches the movie together. Um, another common thing I see a lot of people do um, when they pitch their own ideas is they do quizzes within the Discord, um, which I think isn't the best way. There's obviously other better ways that you can do it, especially since that quiz that quiz method is so saturated. Um, I've also seen people hold a bunch of talent shows where people can showcase um, all the talents they do. Um, sometimes people showcase um, like their workplace, the jobs they work at, and give you more of an in-depth look into their personal lives, which a lot of the uh, founders and team members like to see. Funny story, actually. I remember a, uh, I can't remember the exact project it was, but somebody actually entered a talent show. And for his talent, he would try to eat a burrito Mike in off. under one minute. Mike feedback off. And he actually wasn't able to do it because, you know, it's kind of a ridiculous feat. But he was given whitelist just because, you know, he gave everyone a good laugh and, you know, he, he made everyone have a good time. So just just when you think of things like that, you know, you just got to be really unique. Think outside the box. It doesn't necessarily have to be the coolest talent or anything, but, you know, you can just if you have something funny or you think of something good, just, you know, give it a try, go up there, you know, there's no harm. So the next way to get whitelist is through alpha groups. So a lot of these alpha groups run by influencers will have actually uh, whitelist giveaways that they run through their exclusive groups. So these alpha groups will usually have a limited supply, which is extremely limited. Um, some of the smaller ones range from like 250 to some of the bigger ones being like 1,000, 1,500, for example. So you have ones like DWC, which is Dante Walker's. You have Dark Echelon and Plug Pass, for example. Uh, I've been actually a Dante Walker member before, and that project actually is a 250 piece collection so they actually raffle off whitelist like pretty well sought after whitelist to the 250 members and because the influencers are the actual heads of these projects and they have a lot more connections in the space than we ever will they um are able to actually get a lot more whitelist and have a lot more collaborations with a lot more projects than me or some random person were to start an alpha group so you do have to be selective in terms of what alpha group you get into but it's basically like betting on an individual rather than betting on utility or something like that for example or artwork it's it's literally like betting on a person so if you believe a person Mike will do well in the space and will Mike be here off. a year from Mike now two years from now off. three years from now and continue growing in the space then that person might be a good person to bet on because they could provide you some pretty well sought after whitelist and maybe a lot of value in the future. Another thing with these alpha passes is you don't only get benefits from the creator, you can also get benefits from talking within that community as well. Um, you meet some really great people, especially since it's a tightly knit community. Oh, yeah. 
An example can be um, like we met these guys in the Dante uh, Walker Discord and um, they actually were starting their own alpha pass called the Alpha Guys and we were invited um, to their alpha group and they actually really benefited us in the whitelist they've gotten us and I actually also made artwork for them. I made their profile picture and they gave us uh, the VIP status for their Discord as well. So it's not only about the the creator of the alpha pass it's also the people you meet within these tightly knit communities it's usually a lot more smarter individuals in the space who have been here for a while and they usually have a lot of information you can benefit from so bear in mind some of these passes are a little bit pricier like so that's like why you do tend off. to see more experienced people in these passes just because they are pricier also i'd like to mention that the actual passes themselves like he said it's not just the whitelist giveaways it's also the actual calls themselves so not only whitelist you get from this you're gonna get amazing calls that you can just hop into something on the secondary market ride the wave up hopefully and make some money as well the last thing we're going to talk about is milestone events so milestone events it's kind of one i haven't seen a lot of people touch on but i've seen that personally i think milestone events if you're able to organize it and do a well job at it you can almost secure yourself on a large amount of people whitelist so what milestone events are is basically, let's say a project, let's say the non-fungible fives Twitter is going to hit 100,000 followers. In that case, you could get you and all your friends together on their Discord and go in the VC and change all your profile pictures to, to like each letter of like congrats 100K. And when they see things like that, then you can make a tweet about it, congratulating them. And they can see that you were able to collaborate with a large number of people and organize and do something special for this event and that you were able to do something that was time sensitive as well. So it just shows the project and the founders of the project that you really care about the project itself and that you're really happy and want to celebrate this milestone with them. So they tend to reward people who do that a lot of times with whitelist. I've seen a lot of people actually have success with that. I haven't done it myself. That's actually something we personally haven't tried as a group, but I know a lot of people I know personally in the space who've had a lot of success doing that. Again, give us a follow on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a like. We're trying to get to that hundred subscribers. So, you know, we can start that giveaway going. Remember, we are going to be uploading every Monday and Thursday, so keep an eye out for our videos. And that's Mike basically off. it. Mike Have a good one on Fungible Fem. We're only up from here. Peace.